In this video, we are going through primary 6 math, the topic of percentage, and we're looking at some of the previous examination questions that has appeared before. Caleb bought a camera with 40% of his money and a radio which cost 83 less than the camera. If he spent 265 altogether, how much money did he have at first? Alright, so for percentage question, it's very important for you to realize what is the 100%. Uh, and if you're not super sure, then just draw models to help you with this, all right? So, 40% uh, of his money and a radio which costs $83 less than the camera. So every time I see this kind of question, uh, this kind of information, I will always, I like to draw the models. All right, $83 less, radio costs 83 less than the camera. So I like to draw just the big part on top and then a small part below. I know there's something to do with $83 lesser. So $83 lesser. Then I try to figure out which is on top and below. Radio, which costs 83 less than the camera. So I know that 83 less is radio is here, camera is on top. Okay, so with this, I sort of figure out part of the question. So Caleb bought a camera with 40% of his money. So for 40% of his money, I got a camera and a radio which costs $83 less than the camera. So I know that my one unit is here, one unit is here, and I spent 265 So what's the cost of my camera? They should know how to figure this out. So uh, 1U plus 1U plus 83 is equals to $265. So my 1U is... 265 minus 83 divided by 2. Okay, I'm skipping a few steps here. So if you cannot follow, just uh, ask me during class. So my 1U is 91. All right, so my radio is 91. My camera is 91 plus 83 equals 174. So my 40% went to a camera, so my camera is 174, so 40% is actually 174. 174. So how much money did he have at first? So at first is 100%, so 100%. So usual divide times. Now this divide and times will come in really useful for percentage question, all right, so you know what I mean. After we go through a few examples, so 100 divided by 40 times 174 equals 435. All right, so this is the amount of money she had. he had at first. Uh, for percentage questions, it's very important to know which divide by which. Uh, so it's 100 divided by 40 is you, want, you get 174. So you need to know 40% is actually you need to be very clear, 40% is your 174, uh, and you're looking for 100%, and 100% you need to divide by this. A lot of students make the mistake of taking 40 divided by 100, all right? So 40 divided by 100, which is incorrect, all right? Because if you work it out, it's a much smaller number than 135, so this is incorrect. You need to take 100 divided by 40, and if you... Uh, if you again, this is another kind of like mathematical structure or... Uh, f formula or something like that, then if you lay it out in this format or in this structure, then it's very obvious to you that it need to take 100 divided by 40 times the 174, all right? And that's how you get 435. All right, so this question is very long and every time I have a very long question, the first thing you know what you must do, you must cover up, read it once first and then cover it up to help you to focus on the parts uh, that you need, come up with the, so okay, I'm going to write this down, right? So read once first, just to give, give an idea of what is that question all about. And then after that, find a way to cover up uh, the question and then create mathematical, your math structure, okay? So when you have long questions, it's almost guaranteed that you're going to have a math structure of like, the people involved and the actions that they do. So people on this row, actions in this column. So people involved also includes your total and your difference. Huh? Uh, and then all your values inside. 
all right? And then you're gonna like plus minus times divide the values inside, but it's almost guaranteed that you are going to use this mathematical structure, all right? So let's take a look. So I've got my card ready here. You can see this is my card. I'm gonna cover it. I'm gonna read it once first and so read once. The ratio of number of men to women is something 2016 decreased by something, increased by something, totals 2016. Was there an overall increase or decrease? Blah blah blah. What's the difference? Okay, so I need to know there's a difference. Overall means my total. So I need my total column and my difference column. So let's cover up and try to do it. So in 2015, ratio of men to women. Alright, so I know I have men to women and in 2015 okay so these are the people involved i need my total and my difference and my men and my woman so my man and my woman is five is to four so my man to my woman is five is to four my total is nine my difference is one all right just quickly write that down in it doesn't take more effort uh in 2016, the number of men decreased by 30% and the number of women increased by 50%. So 2016, the number of men decreased by 30% minus 30%. Just put my units in here. And my number of women increased by 50%. So more women are being active. Increased by 50%, all right? So a total of five, 225 men and women signed up for the marathon in 2016. So I have my total column here and I have 5225 men and women. So it's total of men and women in 2016. Okay, so let's look at this. Was there an overall increase or decrease in the total number of people? So you want to find the overall increase or decrease. So men, 5 units minus 30%. So let's do my working here. So my 100% is my 5 units. Minus 30% becomes 70%. I need to find how many units. So it's 70 divided by 100 times 5. Women, 4 units at first. So 100% at first is 4 units. Increase by 50%. So 150% is 150 divided by 100 times 4 and the number is 3.5 units over here and 6 units over here so i have 3.5 units and 6 units my total is 9.5 units 6 plus 3.5 is 9.5 so to answer the first question was there an overall increase or decrease there was an overall increase, all right? And the increase is 9.5 minus 9 of 0 0.5 units. Okay, so again, uh, let me repeat. It's just minus 30%. So this is 100%, minus 30% is 70. So 70 divided by 100 times 5, you get 3.5 over here. 150 because it's plus 50%. So it's 100 plus 50 is 150 divided by 100 times 4. It's uh, 6 units over here. So you add 6 plus 3.5 is 9.5. Originally in 2015, there were 9 units. So therefore, now 9.5 is an increase of 0 0.5 units. Let's look at my second question. So again, uh, like, do not, what did I say? Cover up, all right? Cover up and make sure that you know what to do. So what is the difference between the total number of people who signed up for the marathon in two years? So the difference, you know, I know it's 0 0.5 units. So let's find out the difference in the two, the difference between, so I want to find the half unit difference. So that's when your formula or the formula comes in useful. So 9.5 units, I know it's my 5, 2, 2, 5. My difference is 9.5 minus 9 is 0 0.5 units. So I take this, divide it by this, times this. So it's 0 0.5 divided by 9.5 times 5225. And it's equals to 
275 people. All right, so that's the answer. So um, in this question, I want to focus on being able to cover up your question, all right, cover and slowly come up with your mathematical structure. So you have five units and all this, your total and your difference. So these are the people that are involved, which includes your total and your difference. And these are the actions or the time that is happening. Uh, these are the values. So minus 30, you get your 9.5. And the other thing I want to work, uh, focus on as well is also this. A, I, I call this the proportionate structure. I mean, but sometimes you don't understand what I mean. So I just call this the uh, divide times formula. All right. So use the divide divide times formula. So you have your 9.5 units and I know that 9.5 is 5 to 2, 5 and I want to find 0 0.5 units because the question is asking for over here, the question is asking for the difference between the total number of people who sign up in the marathon in two years. So the difference in the two years is 2016 is 9.5. 2015 is 9, so the difference is 0.5 units. I know my 9.5 is two, 5 to 2, 5. I want to find my, I want to find my 0 0.5 units. So use my divide times formula structure. So I just take divide times, so 0 0.5 divided by 9.5 times 5 to 2, 5 equals to 275. And that's your answer. In 2016, 40% of the students in the school were girls, the rest were boys, 224 more boys than girls, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so again, I want to come up with my mathematical structure. I want to write my girls and my boys over here. Uh, these are the people, and I know that there are some kind of total and difference as well, huh? okay, uh, based on the question. And then 40, so it's 2016, so this is the time. Values, 40% of the students in the school were girls. So 40% are girls, so the rest are boys, so 60% are boys. There were 124 more boys than girls, so difference is actually 20%, which is equivalent to 124. 124 more boys, so difference is 60 minus 40 is 20, and I know they told me it's 124. So, so in 2017, so write 2017 over here, some boys transferred to another school, so it's minus a question mark. You don't know how many boys transfer. Uh, reducing the number of boys by 25%. Oh, this line. Reducing the number of boys by 25%. What does this line actually mean? So what this line means is 100% was your original 60%. So now I've reduced it by 25, I become, uh, reduce it by 25, so it's 100 minus 25, so it's actually 75%. So use my divide times structure, so divide times, so it's 75 over 100 times 60% original equals to 45%. So it has dropped by a certain amount and now it is 45%. So girls still remain the same at 40%. So total now is actually only 85%. So what is the total number of students at the end of 2017? I know my 20% 20 is 124. So now I have reduced to 85%. So therefore, it is 85 divided by 20 times this, and the answer is 5 to 7 students. All right, so for this question, the tricky part is actually this line. It reduced the number of boys by 25%. So what does this mean? So it's actually like, initially there was 100%, now there is, it reduced, so now there is only 75%. And uh, because it reduced by 25%. So initially, 100% is actually the 60% uh, that we counted. So if you find this complicated, you just remove the percent sign, all right? So 100%, you can think it's 60 boys. 75% is 75 divided by 100 times 60 is 45 boys in a way, all right? And you just add the percent sign back. 
So from 60, it dropped to 45%. That's reducing by 25. You cannot take 60 minus 25%. That's wrong, all right? So 60 minus 25 is whatever answer. This is wrong because it's, um, it's not reducing by 25%. It's reduced 25%, okay? So reduced by 25, you need to use this uh, divide times structure to find out what is the final percentage. So it's 45%, girls remain the same, 40%. So total reduced by, uh, re from 100, it dropped to 85% because some boys left. So 85%, then they ask you total number of students at the end of 2017. So it's actually this, you have to find this 85%. Now you found out on top that the difference, uh, 60 minus 40, 20% 20 is 124. So with that, you can find 85%. So you just do the divide and times formula and you get your 527 over here. All right, so as usual, looking at me do is easy. Go and try it yourself, all right? Figure out how to do it yourself. Understand where are your 100% and your 50% and your 25% and then do it from there. Uh, make sure you can do this question by yourself and you're able to come up with your divide and time structure by yourself and also this whole mathematical structure uh, by yourself, all right? Don't just look at me do it. You have to try it out yourself. Mr. Ong bought 120 sets of laptops. He sold 20% of them at a the price he had paid. He sold three quarters of the remaining at 850 each and the rest at a 12% discount off the selling price of 850. In the end, Mr. Ong earned this amount, okay? So first of all, 120 sets of laptops, 20% of the price he paid, which is the cost price. So cost price is usually, so your cost price is your 100%. He sold three quarters of the remaining laptops at 850 each and the rest at a 12% discount off the selling price. So selling price is 850. So if you look at this, uh, this is your selling price. This is your cost price. So your selling price must be higher than your cost price. Okay, so there must be some kind of profit over here. 12% uh, discount off the selling price of 850. So let's draw out the discounted price first. So this is the discounted price, which is somewhere over here. All right. So this is 12%. So this is 88%. And this is 12%. Okay. And then this is selling price you oh, know sorry this is cost price which is like over here okay so this is your cost price um in the end mr ong earned this amount of money how much did mr ong pay for one laptop again i see remaining laptops right then i'll think of using the branching method all right so let's try using the branching method so i have 120 laptops I sold 20% of them at my cost price and three quarters of my remaining. So I'm remaining of 80, three quarters of my 80% at, uh, three quarters at 850 each and the rest, which is one quarter at a 12% discount. So it's 88 percent of 850 all right so you need to figure out how i got this uh, let me explain so total i have 120 laptops 20 percent of the laptops i sold at cost price which is written here 20 percent at the price he paid for them which is cost price so i'm remaining with 80 percent right so 80 percent you sold three quarters of the remaining laptops so three quarters of the 80 percent at 850 each with some profit over here based from the cost price uh, and the rest at a 12 percent discount of the selling price of 850 so at a 12 percent discount is 100 minus 12 equals to 88 percent of the selling price of 850 so 88 percent of uh 88% of 850, all right? So let us just work this out first. How many laptops did he sell? So 20% 20 20% of 
120 laptops equals to 24 laptops at cost price. So 24 laptops, 80 laptops times 120, so 80% times 120 equals to 96 laptops. So 96 laptops, 3 quarters of 96. So 3 quarters of 96 equals to 72 laptops at 850 each. And 1 quarter of 96 is... 1 quarter of 96 is 24 laptops and 88% of 850 is 748. So you have 24 laptops at 748 each. So let's find out how much I earn from this part, which is the 3 quarters, no sorry, the 80%. Uh, so I have 3 quarters, I have 72 laptops at 7, 850 each. So 72 laptops times 850, that's equals to 61,200 dollars. And then I have 24 laptops times 748 each, which is equals to 17952. And I add them up to a total of 79152. Now, because I know that this was at cost price, and only this, this part, there was some profit made over here, because this was sold at cost price, right? So therefore, the profit all came from here, and I know that my profit that I earned was 3792. So I need to find the cost of a laptop now. So the cost price of 96, 96 laptops, is actually equals to, so if I draw the model out, this is the selling price, this is the cost price, and da, 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 my this is my profit. All right, and I know my profit is uh, 3792 over here, 3792. So 3792. So if I want to find my uh, cost price, it's my selling price, Minus away my profit, I get my cost price over here. All right. So my cost of 96 laptops is 79152 minus away 3792. So that's my cost of 96 laptops. So if I cost of one laptop is equals to this whole thing divided by 96. Right, so I'm skipping steps. If you are not comfortable with this, then just find 96, work it out, and then find one laptop. And the answer is $785. So that's the cost of one laptop. So let's look at what the question is looking for. How much did Mr. Ong pay for one laptop? Oh, I found it. All right, so that's the cost of one laptop, which is 785 so let me go through and explain in detail. So basically, uh, when I see the word remaining, I will use the branching method, right? So I know my branching method, 20% is at cost price. I'm re my remaining is 80%. And uh, out of my remaining, I know three quarters I sold at this amount, one quarter at this amount. I already got my numbers. So 80% times 120 is 96, three quarters times 96 is 72. Uh, I know 72 sold at 850. And 24 is sold at 748 because I minus away 12% is 88%. And uh, so therefore, I take 72 over here times 850, 24 over here times 748. I get my total. This is my selling price. And I know my selling price is my cost price plus my profit over here. Just ignore this model. Right? It sometimes confuses people. So cost price plus profit is my selling price, which is... I, let me just write it out over here. My cost price and my selling price. So this entire thing is 79,152. All right. So I can find my cost price, which is 79,152 minus 3,792. That's my profit. Divided by 96, because I've got 96 laptops over here. And my each laptop is 785. Okay, I skip question... 5 and 6, so jump straight to question 7. So M, N and O 
agreed to share a cost of present, M agreed to pay 35, well, N agreed to pay blah, blah, blah. Oh, I look at this. This is the keyword. I found this keyword remaining. Therefore, I need to use branching. The rest of the amount will be paid by O. Oh, however, when they went to buy, the price of the item increased by 35 as a result, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so long question again. I want to show you the technique of covering up the question and uh, focusing on one line at a time. So this is my card over here or my paper or whatever. So just cover it up. M, N, and O agreed to share a cost of present for their friend. All right, so now I know I have M, N, and O. So just write down, again, create the mathematical structure uh, is to read. So the process is to read the question. Uh, find the keywords if necessary and find, figure out what way to use it and create the uh, mathematical structure all right which is what i'm doing now so m n and o m n and o leave some space please i have some total so m agreed to pay 35 percent of the cost of the present so m is 35 percent of the cost of the present while n agreed to pay 20 percent of the remaining amount so i'll just quickly do m is 35 percent for m my remaining is 65% and N agreed to pay 20% of the 65%. So let me just calculate that, which is equals to 13%. And the rest of the amount will be paid by O. So the rest of this amount will be paid by O, which is 80% will be paid by O. So 80% of 65 is 52%. All right, so N is 13%, O is 52%. Total add up should be a hundred. So let's just check. If you take 35 plus 13 plus 52, that's a hundred. So at least the checking, uh, the working is correct. However, when they went to buy the present, the price of the item had increased by 35%. As a result, Mutu paid $94 for his share. So in, instead of total being 100, now the total is 135%. And how? what do we do with all these three numbers here? So we know uh, it's increased by 35, right? So I need to times 35% Actually, it's not 35, but it's times 135% because it increased, where is it? Price of the item has increased by 35%. So it's from 100% increased by 35 into 135%. Okay, so I need to times 135 to all the numbers over here. And I need to work that out. Basically, if I want to times 135, it's also equivalent to multiply by 1.35 is the same all right so become 135 percent and you take 1.35 multiply by all three and you come up with the answer all right so you come out with the answer one answer two answer three so it is 1.35 times this 1.35 times this 1.35 times this you get the three answers. As a result, Motu paid $94.50 for his share. So whatever you come up with this, so this amount is $94.50. Alright, so let's look at the question. So I'll shift my card away. Oops, instead of this. Uh, where's my card? So I'll shift my card away. What was the original price of the present? So the increased present is 94.50, so original price is 100%. So again, 100 divided by this times this, right? So that's the original price of the present. And how much did Osman pay at the end? So whatever Osman paid over here, the new number over here, just put it below here, and then you do a divide and a times. Then you get the new amount that Osman paid. Okay, so I've done quite a few examples for you. I want you to go and try this yourself and figure out the answer. All right, so this is a very long question again. So remember the process, read, 
cover and then do your math structure all right so i've got my trusty cover over here you can see it i'll just read it once quickly give uh give myself an idea of what's going on so in the library crs kt books on a b 15 percent fewer library add more books to b a number of books b increased by 25 percent some books of a were borrowed by some children and the number of a decreased by 10 percent blah 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 okay uh that's good enough so let's use my trusty card to cover up and start working on it so i know i have so i'm building my mathematical structure now i know i have a uh, bookshelf a and bookshelf b so boys and girls please uh, give yourself some space over here don't get write a and then b over here and then write like three units two units one unit five units whatever uh. all right so give yourself some space to write down your units okay so your mathematical structure is here 160 books on bookshelf a so 160 books on bookshelf a i don't see any remaining so i won't be using my branching method bookshelf b had 15 percent fewer books than bookshelf a so bookshelf b had 15 percent so 100 minus 15 is 85 percent times bookshelf a is 160 so that's equals to 136 books at bookshelf b now the librarian added more books to bookshelf b and the number of books on bookshelf b increased by 25 so again you see this famous word increased by 25 so that means it's actually it was 100 then now it's 125 all right uh, which is this 125 so if you see decreased by 25 then it's 100 then minus 25 becomes 75 percent okay so increased by 25 is 125 percent so it becomes 100 so uh bookshelf b so at 25 percent to b that's the action so it's 125 percent times 136 which is also equals to 1.25 times 136 equals 170 books okay so i covered it so let's remove my card a bit lower uh, some books from bookshelf a were borrowed by some children and the number of books de decreased by 10 percent so bookshelf a used to have 100 so now minus 10 percent now left with 90 percent so borrowed so borrowed with from a so it becomes 90 percent times 160 equals to 0 0.9 times 160 equals to 144 books in bookshelf a how many books were there on bookshelf b after the librarian had added so i added 25 and the answer is i already got it it's 170 books okay so it's uh, 125 times 136 books so it is 170 books so that's quite okay uh was there an overall increase or decrease in the total number of books so initially the total number of books is 160 plus 136 equals 296 after that the total is 170 plus 144 equals 314 books so was there an overall increase or decrease there was an overall increase in the number of books all right and let's look at my card and look it down what was the percentage increase or decrease in the total number of books give your answer correct to the nearest whole number so the percentage percentage increase is how much 314 originally there was uh 296 so percentage increase is actually the increase 314 minus away 296 divided by the original amount 296 times 100 percent now this is a formula if you don't understand this again ask me in class basically you want to find the amount that increased so from 296 
it increased to 314. I want to find this amount, how much is it? And divided by, so this amount divided by the original amount, which is 296. So if you take 314 minus 296, that is equals to 18 divided by 296 times 100% equals 6.08%. The one nearest whole number, so it's 6 so there was a 6% increase from 296 to 314. So in this question, I want to emphasize again uh, on using a card or a paper or a blank paper to cover up the long question so that you can create, you can read the, so read the question first, just get a rough idea of what techniques are you going to use? Is it a mathematical structure? Is it a divide time structure? Is it going to be the models? Is it going to be a uh, branching method? Or is it just you have a rough idea of what you're going to use? And then after that, use the uh, paper or blank paper to cover it. So if you don't have a blank paper during exam, just fold your exam paper and cover it. So there were 160 books, so just write down, create your mathematical structure. Again, uh, if it's a long question, 90% of the time, you are going to use the mathem mathematical structure, right? It might be combined with a uh, branching method or it might be combined with a model method, but the, the main part, all right, how you're going to break down this question is to write it in the mathematical structure where you have your people over here uh, or the, the actors or the, the, the people over here and you have the action over here, all right? the things that they're doing over here and all the values are in the middle. So once you've done that, um, then you can slowly create the structure and times it out. So in terms of the mathematics of this problem, nothing much to, I mean, it's quite straightforward. Like, so 85%, 136, total is just add up these two together. Then increase 25%, you need to know is 125%, it's 1.25 and not, uh, I don't know, 125, all right? So if you decrease, then it's 100 minus away the decrease, which is, this is 100 minus away the decrease is 10, so it's 90%, it becomes 0 0.9, you get 144, uh, there's 170, so again, total add up, you get 314. 314, originally there was 296. Ah, the, maybe this question, something that's uh, different or special is this part. Percentage increase is always the new total, all right, the new total over here, the new total minus away the original, divide by the original number over here, okay? So 314 minus 296, you get 18, original is 296 times 100%, round off, you get 6%, and that's your answer.